Good morning. I like to put a little caffeine in my cup. This is like a little caffeine powder. It's like 200 milligrams. It wakes me up. I'm up and I'm like ready to go. And I don't have to have this. I just enjoy it because of the way it makes me feel. By the way, I got a new lens. This is about $400. So I hope that the autofocus is working correctly. Anyways, anyways. The reason I want to make this video, guys, is to tell you how to survive Navy boot camp. And I've broken it up into two things, okay? So I could tell you all these little, little minute things, but all in all, I think the most important thing you're going to pull out of this is just do what I say, do these two things, and you will survive Navy boot camp. But first, but first, I know you guys love the boot camp story, so I'm going to sprinkle another one in real quick. So I plan to just sprinkle these bootcamp stories throughout my video. So keep watching and maybe you'll get some entertainment from them. There I was, okay. December 9th, 2013, I go into bootcamp. I've already covered this part, but later on, our petty officers put us in a height line. Now, first time they said height line, I was like, like running around with the chicken, with the, with the chicken, like a chicken with my head cut off. Cause I didn't know what it was. But then they explained that it was the shortest person in the front, the tallest person in the rear. So we were just looking at each other, like going like this, you know, trying to decipher all of our heights so the petty officers wouldn't be mad at us. But finally we got it, you know, 85 to 90 people were all in a height line. And they do this because when you're marching, you'll be short in the front, tall in the rear, which makes it look really good. You'll use this height line to march everywhere and to do everything. It was myself, behind me was a guy named Barnum, in front of me was a guy named Ellsworth. Okay, now I hope you guys are watching this because God bless you, I hope you're doing good. Ellsworth is the person I want to talk about. So Ellsworth and I, we, we started to develop a bond because every time you know we would line up in this height line, we would see each other and we would just kind of like poke and prod at each other and just do a bunch of weird stuff to each other. Probably sounded weird. It is the Navy. We would be in the galley and the way it lined up is Ellsworth would sit right across the table from me every single day. And as boot camp progressed, you know, two, three, fourth, fifth week, I would kind of, I kind of learned to like what I could do to like get on his nerves and stuff like that. So he was eating one day and he was sitting there, you know, he would drink, you know, he, you know, he would eat and you have your, you have your manual in your left hand. So you're sitting there, by the way, here's another tip. You're sitting there, you hold your manual in your left hand. Well, at least this is how it was when I went through. You're holding your recruit manual in your left hand which tells you everything about the navy you know super motivated everything it's like this thick you're holding it and you're having to eat with your right hand well i'm holding my manual in my left hand and i'm looking at ellsworth i was already i was already done eating because i would eat quick you know back in alabama my brother would always steal my food so i would always eat fast as he would eat and drink i would illustrate the way his meal sounded so he would eat and i'd be like and then he would take a drink and I would be like, you know, keep in mind, I wasn't doing this loud at all. And it's pretty, pretty quiet in that galley. So you can definitely hear it as he ate, illustrating his meal. And finally he realized that I was doing it, you know, and then people like three or four people down, they would realize that I was doing it too. So I did this week after week. And so he would drink and I'd be like, and he would eat and I'd be like, and I guess one day he was just in a horrible mood or something. I'm sorry, sorry Ellsworth. And finally one day he just looked at me, he's like, dude, stop. And I was like, dang, I was like, okay, well, I took it as a kind of like a joke because I was kind of messing with Ellsworth like this whole time. That's, that's just the way I am. I was just, I was poking and prodding with him. And so I stopped, you know, two or three bites later, I did it again. And he's like, dude, stop. And you could tell like, he was kind of gritting his teeth. He's like, dude, stop. And he was getting really mad. And everybody else thought it was funny. Well, I'm all in it for the show, and I was trying to entertain these folk around me, my fellow recruits. And, you know, I waited until he wasn't noticing again, and then he would take a drink, and I'd be like, and dude, he's, I swear he started to grit his fist. He's like, dude, stop. And everybody was just, just laughing around me. And I don't know how the petty officers didn't see us or notice us or anything. Or maybe they did, but they thought it was funny as well. But finally, that last time, you know, I kept doing it, I kept doing it. He just puts his manual down. And he's like, dude, stop! And he beats the table. Uh, he just had like a anger rage or something. And all of a sudden you hear, Ellsworth! And he's just turned slow motion, it looks like. Like he was looking at the petty officer. Petty officer was looking at him. Petty officer was sitting there at the table. He's like, feet! And then when they say that, you stand up. And so Ellsworth stood up. He's like, Trey! So Ellsworth took his tray and, you know, Ellsworth is just looking at me the whole time like, 
like super, super mad, head shaking, everything. So he makes it up to the petty officer and the petty officer makes him throw his tray away and whatnot. And they, they have to feed you, okay? They can't not feed you. So he goes, seat. Again, petty officer says, seat. And Ellsworth sits down and Ellsworth just looking at me the whole time. And all of a sudden, petty officer comes over there and drops a bag nasty right in front of him. A bag nasty, for those of you that don't know, of course, most of you don't, most of you don't, bag nasty is it's just such a universal meal there's like a little paper bag it comes with an apple a granola bar and a sandwich and that sandwich is probably about two or three days old Ellsworth was sitting there with the bag nasty and he's just looking at me like super super mad anyways i was avoiding eye contact with him because i felt horrible like i felt bad because he, they ruined his meal and he had to sit here and eat this bag nasty petty officer calls feet and the whole division stands up and i'm sorry not petty officer the arpoc recruit petty officer commander Arpot calls feet, he says tray, we all line up in the height line and take our trays and whatnot and we were marching back to the compartment and you hear him say, Ellsworth, again he pulls him out of line and he's lined up at senior chief's office. Well, I'm freaking out at this point because I thought Ellsworth was going to snitch on me, but I swear it was probably eight or nine hours later, finally Ellsworth comes back in the compartment and he's, he's still kind of mad at me, but he's like realized that it was just a joke and everything and He's like, dude, I sat at senior chief's office for eight hours. This is no surprise because they will make you stand forever. Like they make you stand in places because that's one thing that they can do. You know, they can only beat you for so long, but they can make you stand in lots of places at attention. And I was like, dude, I was like, I'm so sorry. It'll now ha never happen again. You know, cause he was my, he wasn't my rack mate, but he was to the left of me in the rack. So he slept next to me. Wait, 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 wait. That sounded wrong. He slept in the rack next to me. After that, me and Ellsworth were, were pretty tight, but he was kind of mad at me for about you know a day or so after. But after that, we're pretty tight, and we still continue to talk. Ellsworth, I miss you if you're watching this. Trust me, guys. For those of you that are going into boot camp, I know what you're going through. Some of you were nervous. Some of you are scared, some of you don't know what to expect, and you keep watching these videos to kind of ease your mind about it. Well, if you hear anything out of this video, I want you to know that boot camp is not the Navy, okay? Boot camp is not the military. Boot camp is designed to be like the military on steroids. Everything you do is completely exaggerated, like from the laundry to the marching and everything. Like, honestly, I don't even think I've marched since I've been out of the boot camp. My patch is good. And some of the things that you will go through, they are completely exaggerated, like I said. Like your petty officers, they're not really like that in real person, okay? They're literally acting, okay? So your petty officers will be extra, extra stern because they're molding you. And I know at the time when you're going through it, it seems like they're being completely serious, but they're molding you into a sailor, okay? So the reason how I figured this out is because after I got out of boot camp, uh, I saw my petty officer. I was graduated. I was in... Uh, THC, TSC, Training Service Center, across the road. And I saw my petty officer, he's like, Alexander, man, what's up, bro, how's it going? He's like, congrats on graduating boot camp. And I was like, it was completely different from what he was like in boot camp. So what I'm about to tell you, hopefully it can ease most of y'all's mind because that's what I'm here for, okay? I wanna help you, I wanna get you prepared for boot camp. All right, so now we're getting into the meat and potatoes. I'm actually driving to work right now, I have duty, it's Monday, Columbus Day, happy Columbus Day. The top two things that are gonna help you excel and conquer boot camp are, number one, is do what you're told, okay? The petty officers are there to help you excel. The petty officers are there to grade you and they're there to kind of watch over you. So if they tell you to do something, um, i.e. sweep the floor, swab the deck, then you better do it. It doesn't matter how often they're picking on you. It doesn't matter if they're telling you to swab the deck, you know, for five weeks straight, you do it. You're only in boot camp for seven to eight weeks, okay? You can buckle down and you can put up with this because they're trying to break you down. If, if they see a weakness in somebody, they're going to keep tapping, keep tap, 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 like a woodpecker, and they're going to try to break you down. And they try to get to know everybody. Like, they try to grade and put everybody through the test. So just because you're being told to swab the deck doesn't mean nobody else is. To summarize the first one, it's always do what you're told, okay? The petty officers are there, are there to help you. Trust me, they're there to help you. So the second thing is to show some initiative, show some motivation, because if the petty officers see some motivation and they know that you wanna be in there, 
they're going to treat you better down the line. They may poke and prod at you at first, but trust me, they're going to treat you better down the line. And the reason I say this is because if they constantly notice you not volunteering for anything or not showing any teamwork or any effort, they're going to pick you for a BS job and it's not going to be fun. That's what happened to me. I sat back in boot camp and I was I was nervous, you know, even though I'm 6'3", you know, 230 now in boot camp, I was super super shy and nervous. I was like sitting in the corner like biting my teeth, like scared like not knowing what's going on. But finally they picked me to be weapons PO, which requires a very exact um, order of operations you have to go through and I got yelled at so many times. And Looking back now, I wish I would have volunteered for stuff like RPOC, AROG, because these these were like the favorites in the boot camp. These were like the favorites of the RDC. So my second tip for you is to show some initiative and motivation. That's pretty much it. If you obey these things, if you do what you're told, show some initiative and motivation, you're going to excel at boot camp. Okay? I don't mean for this to be a generic answer, but it's the truth. Okay? Everything that I can think of fall under these two things. Okay? So guys, I'm going into work right now. I really hope this video helped y'all out and I really would appreciate it if you subscribed if you're new here and I will see you on the next episode.